Hi, hello, how are you everyone? I hope you're all good because we are back with another Unity tutorial. And in this tutorial we're going to be dealing with the destruction of our player and we're going to be setting up some HUD elements to assist our player. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make some destruction script. Now as usual just make a new script by right clicking and then going to create and then uh, C sharp script but I've already generated our script and I'll show it to you right now in a second as we hop on over to MonoDevelop. Okay so we're over here in MonoDevelop and I've written up a short script that I've called destroy us and uh, this is going to be your public class so don't change that and let me just go through and explain what this script is doing right now it's saying void on trigger enter collider other so what this entry is telling us is that an event will take place when these colliders come in contact now if other dot tag now we're going to work out what tags are in a second okay so coming in with a bit of an intermission guys i did forget to talk about player tags originally and i just realized while editing that i neglected to do that so what we're going to do is we're going to go to player object and we're going to just talk about some tag. Now the tag is um, identified here and it's a little bit of a drop down, right? So we've got a custom tag that we've named player. Now let me show you how to add a tag. You go to add tag and you go to um, plus and then you make your tag which could be, I'll just, you know, for demonstration sake, make it press and then enter. And then let me go back to here. And as we can see there, our tag is now pressed. Now this is important because it's in our script as you have probably just seen. So just make sure that the um, if objects dot other equals equals and then the tag of the object just make sure that equals player if you're following my script or or equals the word that you've inputted if you're changing the script slightly and yeah you just want to do that and to attach a script to an object you just select it off of the drop down once you've added the tag thanks for that we'll get back to it right about now but if other dot tag equals player well, we're going to destroy the other game object, which is going to be the player, and we're going to destroy the game object that this script belongs to, which is our shots, which we're going to assign this script to in a second. So now that we've got everything there, uh, just if you want to take a good look, here you go. We can head back to Unity and apply that script to our shots. So luckily with Nemesis, we don't have to work that hard to figure out which shots we're actually using because we've got them attached right here so it turns out we're using shots 3 which you might have called something else but if you're having difficulty just finding out which shots you want to attach this script to just go to nemesis game object and it should be there in the shots field so we go to shots 3 and I've already added this component but let me just show you how we do that one more time so what we do with this drop down is we go down to scripts and we see our existing script and we go to destroy us or whatever you called the script that you just wrote and then our script is attached here and let's test it out in play mode okay uh, let, let's do a replay of that okay so let's imagine it from the players perspective uh, we probably have better patterns going on and the player's moving to and fro, to and fro, and the game is over. And the game is over. That's right, we don't have a game over state yet, which we're going to work on later. But something else that's pretty disappointing is that our game is over in one hit. So we're going to give our player at least a chance to win against our nemesis over here. So what we want to do is create some HUD elements that are going to be our health and then we're going to add some health script to our player. And only after our health is completely depleted are we going to actually end the game and we'll do it properly. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to right click in the hierarchy 
and then go down to UI and then canvas and this is going to be the parent object of our UI component. Next let's go to add component and then find canvas group. So if you just want to search in that search box right there and you'll just find canvas group and we're going to add that and deselect blocks raycast and interactable because we do not want this to be interactable we just want this to be the UI that sits on top of our game. Now I'm going to go over to um, 2D mode so we can get a good look at what's actually happening here. And as you can see, our UI is immense. It is absolutely massive. Now there's a good reason for that. I'm pretty sure it assures great fidelity in our UI that we start off so big because everything is converted to units from pixels and a bunch of complicated stuff. That I just read about and watched just a second ago but the main thing is that this assures that our UI is going to look on point. So what we want to do with our canvas is we want to right click on it and then create empty to make an empty child game object and we're going to name this uh, HP and this is going to be where our health icon and health bar are going to be placed. Now there are ways in which we can shift this around we can uh, just freely shift it around if we want to although it, we do get a bit of assistance from unity with uh, I don't know the clipping kind of stuff that you get with Microsoft Word or whatever Microsoft anything these days but let's use the anchor presets to make sure that we've got everything as accurate as we want it to so I want you to press alt and shift and we're gonna take this to the bottom left right? so this is where our HP UI components are going to rest. Now let's scale those down a little bit because it's kind of looking a little clunky being that big because if you've noticed the UI is taking this shape which is the same shape as our camera view so if it looks kind of weird here it's gonna look kind of weird in our game so let's take the height down to 50 and leave the uh, width at 100. So now that we've positioned our HP, we're going to right click on here and create another child, but we're going to go to UI this time and then go to UI image. And we're going to select a sprite. Now I'm just going to show you how you can create a sprite and pretty much what we're going to use a sprite for is to indicate that we have health here. So as you can see, I've selected my sprite there, but let's take a look at this object right now. So I'm not going to do anything to it right now, but when it comes in, uh, let's use this as an example. When our object is placed in Unity, when we import it by just saving it in our assets folder or whatever folders, we're going to find that it's not a sprite and we can't actually access it the way that we did just a second ago. So what we want to do is we want to go to texture type and we want to go from texture to sprite 2d UI do not do that with your background because I'm not sure what's going to happen and that might be bad but if you do just press ctrl z or something I mean, you should be fine but with this image just find an image wherever you can and just change that to sprite 2d UI oh yeah I could have demonstrated it there and it will be set as texture just by default and that's how we're going to be able to access it as a UI component. Now let's transform this component, take it down to 25 by 25 and position it where we want it. So that seems a little too much on the center. So we're gonna hit Alt, Shift and we're gonna place that there. Now let's zoom in real quick because that does not look great. Yeah, just make sure we're on in the 2D view, as I said before. Uh, and let's just zoom in and see what's going on there. Yeah, we can just pull that over a little bit, and we should be fine right there. And if you just want to check how it's going to look in the final thing, you can go back to your game view, and you'll see your UI components actually appearing. Now, it doesn't have to be a plus sign that you're using. It can be a heart, it can be... Uh, I don't know, like a burrito or something, anything you really want, as long as it's going to indicate what you want it to indicate. So we're going to go back to scene, and we're going to add another child to HP. 
what a fruitful object and we're going to go to UI and slider so this is going to act as the health bar for our player and we're just going to change its positioning and things like that just to make sure that the final thing is what we want so as you can see we've got some children for our slider component and what we don't need is the handle slide area so let's just get rid of that and uh, that makes our component look a little cleaner and we don't need anyone to interact with it so uh, that gets rid of the little handle that our player would have access to somehow to move around if they really wanted to as you can see our health bar is going over our health icon we don't want that so let's just change the X position of our component by just dragging it till it looks just about right and let's leave the Z and Y components out of it let's change the width to something else so maybe I don't know 70 and let's just reposition that one more time to see if we can get it just in the right place and we've got it right there moving on with our slider what we want to do is where it says transition and color tint we just want none because we don't need that and the final thing that we want to do is specify how much health our player is going to have so I'm going to make the max value 3 because I want our player to just take 3 shots and then game over. And we want to take the value up to max by just moving that slider all the way to the right. And there we have it, we have some of the basic UI components that will allow our player to see how they are doing in our game. We might add a scoring system, we'll definitely add a health bar for our enemy. But that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I certainly enjoyed making it. If you liked the video, if you want to comment, then don't be scared to do so. We're going to move on to some other interesting things as this series continues and continues. But for today, that is me signing out. So as usual, everyone, I will be back some other time.